Bones, Snoopy, or Blue Nose. Cried and cried till my eyes were sore. I gave you all of my hands. Still you tried to be back. I love you, but playing for the beer. That's not possible. This trail's been closed for eight years. It's extremely dangerous. Make it end. <laughs> well, hello everybody, and welcome back to another episode of A Lifetime of Hallmark. Hello. 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 I can barely hear anyone over this music blasting away like into my blaring. ears. <laughs> <laughs> there it goes. <laughs> Do other people have this problem? Do other people have, like, the theme songs that just override everything else that's going on? I don't know. I don't think so. <laughs> Overpower. The theme, song is, the theme song is taking over. <laughs> so, hello, Jason Howard. Hello, Les Kirkendall. <laughs> hello, Kurt Fitzpatrick. Hello, Les Kirkendall and Jason Bowers. <laughs> and and um, I don't know song. what the weather is like. Uh, in New Jersey, but here in Los Angeles, it is a rainy, rainy day, and it's time for another episode of A Lifetime of Hallmark. Woo! In New Jersey, Woo! it's very cold. Very cold, we're expecting it... snow this weekend. Oh, really? Has it already yes. snowed, or? No, it's going to snow Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, from what I hear. Oh, yikes. Well, but I don't know when this podcast is going out, though. So, Oh, it's going out this week. Oh, okay. Well, then, that's your weather. Weather forecast, everybody. Yes. Well, I think the rain is ending for us. I think tomorrow in L.A. is the last day of the rain, and it better be because I'm going to a wedding on Saturday. <laughs> yeah, I think it's supposed to be nice this weekend in L.A. Perfect. Okay. I like that we're doing weather reports, and I feel like we should add traffic on the tens. Oh Jesus yeah, Christ! Yeah. Traffic, Kurt. Have you ever driven in California? No, but I heard that Elon Musk is digging tunnels underneath uh, Los Angeles, so that you guys won't have that problem anymore. Yeah, Hyperloop. I don't know that it's going to yeah, immediately gonna... solve our yeah. traffic problem. I think it's more of a a gimmick than anything else, but. It sounds well, he, cool. He said he could do ninety. He said he could do like ninety nine levels or a hundred levels, so all kinds of people can be driving underneath Los Angeles. I feel like Elon Musk promises a lot that he isn't necessarily ready to deliver yet, though. <laughs> all right. I don't want to drive on like level ninety eight, ninety nine. So. Yeah, I'd see, I'd have an issue with being underground. Like, I don't mind, like, a subway or something, or, like, the channel, but, like, a high-speed sort of a thing, eh, no. How is that different than, than a, a subway, though? That's what I don't understand. Well, but this is, but then this is supposed to be, like, a high-speed a high thing. Like, isn't it supposed to, like, get you to San Francisco in, like, an, like two hours or something, oh, no. or, like, an hour to yeah. be crazy. Well, the Hyperloop no, and the tunnels thing. under L.A. are two different things. He's working on both. Oh, geez, there's more than yeah. one thing? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, this wait, is... Elon Musk is also working on the high-speed thing? That's I also his so. thing? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I didn't know that. This The, the tunnels okay. under L.A. are more of a proof of concept. I think they'll use the same tunneling... Uh, technology because he owns that company uh shocker uh 
they're going to use the same kind of technology to build the tunnel for the high-speed underground train, but this is something else. This is like a people mover around town or something. Uh, see, we don't need that. No. That we don't need. The high-speed high thing is cool, though. Yeah. No, and that then is. Fresno, Fresno will be a hub, and all the, all the values of everybody's homes in Fresno will go way up. Once you can get from Fresno to uh, San Francisco in an, in an hour. Well, you know what's crazy? Day. When I was in Russia, I went to Russia a couple of years ago, and we took a bullet train from St. Petersburg, from Moscow to St. Petersburg, and it was supposed to be like it's normally like a twelve-hour trip, and we took it in like four hours. Wow. Hmm. So, I am all about the bullet train as long as it's above ground. I'm good. Underground and eh, no. Okay. Yeah. Speaking I of, yeah, I guess I would. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Oh, no, no, no. Go ahead. Oh no, I was gonna say, is the um, is that is the high speed high speed train in uh, California? Is that underground? No, no, no. Um, that's no, above that's ground. Okay. But then the other thing that Elon Musk is working on is underground. Yeah, the LA thing. Okay. Oh no, I'm all about the high speed train. I think that's a good thing. Yeah. You know. Hey, um hey, I'm supposed to go to a for us, I mean, night. Oh, sorry, go ahead. No, no sorry. The subject. I was gonna say I was I was supposed to go to screening tomorrow night of Mary Poppins Revenge and um, I don't think it's revenge. Emily Mary Blunt Poppins will... Revenge. <laughs> she Emily stabs Blunt. everyone with her. Emily Blunt's up. going to be there. Miss Blunt will be there. Yes. So what do you think? Should I ask her to be on the podcast? Yes. You absolutely. Should. Yeah. She has nothing to do with Hallmark. Yeah, the Hallmark, though. Although I will say, having gone to many of those Q&A screeners during award season, the, the people that get up there <laughs> and ask for like, oh, can I have a photo? Or they like ramble on and on, but they don't actually ask a question. The audience yeah, the hates you. So don't be that guy. Yeah, I'm not going to do that. Yeah. No. No, I'm not. I, I don't even ask questions. But sometimes there are people who will stand up during those Q and A sessions, and they like they have a podcast. Uh, yes, I'm from um, uh, Ask an Actress, uh, Actress Actress po uh, podcast. Oh, we've all heard of that. I like that. It's like, oh, sit down and shut up. <laughs> I actually met her once, <laughs> Emily. How's well, that? Uh huh. Okay. A, a couple of years ago. Um, actually, God, this was like probably three or four years ago. Yeah, like four or five years ago. Um, I was going to the Cannes Film Festival with my ex, and we were catching a private jet in England, and she was also catching another private jet. And I started chatting with her because we were in the waiting room. And I was like, oh, that lady's really cool as she walked away. And then I realized, oh, my God, I was just talking to Emily Blunt. Yeah, <laughs> that, that was like my, wow. my meeting with Amy Adams in line at the grocery store. Like, didn't realize Aww. until after the fact that that cool lady I was talking to that let us cut in front of line was Amy Adams. <laughs> That's cool. But then, aren't you glad, though? I know I was glad that after the fact, I was glad that I didn't realize who it was. Yeah, because if you did, you might clam up. You might not be as casual with them, which is all they really want. They just want you to treat them like a real person. And especially since Emily Blunt in Devil Wars Prada is my spirit animal anyway. <laughs> I still have right. to watch A Quiet Place. I have not, I have not watched that yet. Uh, Kurt, have you seen The Devil Wears Prada? Yes. Okay. Okay. Good. I'm, I'm happy. <laughs> <laughs> I have seen it. I don't know if I was like crazy about it. Well, but at least you've seen it. You know, my friend uh, is his uncle is Tim Gunn, and he told me that no! Tim Gunn read Tim Gunn read for the for a role. He read for um, what's his name's probably role the San, in the Stanley in, Tucci role, probably. Yeah, yeah, he read for that role. Yes. But Wait I a asked minute. my friend. I said, <clears throat> I said, do you think Tim Gunn would come on the podcast? Because I thought, you know, Les Kirkendall would poop himself. I if would. Tim Gunn came on. And he just, but he just kind of laughed. He's like, ah, so I don't know. But I might, but what I, what I could do is contact him and drop a name. Say, I, listen, I know your nephew, so let's, let's. I love Tim Gunn. 
I should put some effort for it. I did like kind of ask him, but he was like, ah, like I, I don't even think he said any any actual words. Well, we need to find out <laughs> when the the new Amazon show is dropping, because you know Tim Gunn, okay. Gunn and Heidi Klum left Project Runway and are doing some sort of okay. new fashion competition for Amazon. Yes. So whenever yeah. they're going to be promoting that, that might be the time to ask. Yes, and then he could like even like. He could even do something like rate the outfits in the movie or something, or tell us how they, oh, yeah, how yeah. the women in this mo- in these movies could help themselves. Are we gonna make yeah. Tim Gunn watch some Hallmark and Lifetime movies? Yeah, let's make him watch them. Yes. Make well, actually, suffer. well, actually, a Lifetime movie because Lifetime was his former network anyway. Right, but he left. Okay. Then he's leaving to go work somewhere else now. Well, now this is I on the air, right? So people. So people, he might be hearing this. Yes. Well, I would love that if good. Tim Gunn listened. Tim Gunn good. and Michael yeah, Madsen. No. Michael Madsen. <laughs> so somebody, if you, if anybody out there knows Tim Gunn, if you also have, an, have another connection, because my friend's not like it's like Tim Gunn's not as like his real uncle. He's but he's his uncle. I'm not, not quite sure how it works. If it's not the real uncle, there's probably a close then, family friend. Yeah. That's actually yeah. probably somebody better to ask than actual family. Right. Yes. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Call him up. Oh my god. Uh, but before we start, oh but oh get this. I was like yes. reading this magazine the other day. And remember remember our friends James Iver Madsen and Barbara Bronner? Yeah. Yes. Get their movie, the movie that just came out, um The Northern Lights of Christmas, mm-hmm. that movie turned out to be like even surpassed their marrying Mr. Darcy movie. And this was like over the Christmas holidays, that movie was like the most watched movie on the Hallmark Mysteries channel. Oh, that's awesome. Wow. All right, Hallmark, really cool. pay up for their next movie then. Mm-hmm. Right. Pay up. That is completely attributable <laughs> to us. We made yes, that happen. That's right. You're welcome, we, Hallmark we, channel. <laughs> we drove a yeah Hallmark pay up pay us too we're driving people over there <laughs> and I'm excited about the cat bowl like there's a super and during the super bowl the Hallmark channel is having the cat bowl so I'm totally in, I'm on board I might actually voluntarily watch the Hallmark channel wait I have one better and I was gonna wait to tell you this. But I'll tell you this. So you know the Hallmark Channel actually has a rescue dog competition that they actually show on the Hallmark Channel, right? And no. So, they, so, so it's like, it's like a, a Westminster dog show but for rescue dogs kind of thing or what? Yes. Yes. Well, I got a phone call and a text and a picture from my friend who had entered his dog in. In the dog show. And he couldn't tell me how his dog did because it comes out in February. But I asked him if he would like to talk to us. And he said, absolutely. Oh, so so, so he could, if he can't talk, that means the dog's actually on the competition, like actually on the show. Yes. Yeah. Okay. That's cool. Well, and then okay. he sent me a picture with he sent me a picture with him. Um, Ross Matthews was like one of the judges, and so he sent me a picture of him and the dog and Ross Matthews. Wow, well, I thought you were gonna say Ross Perot. <laughs> Ross That's Perot one, is one of the judges. <laughs> <laughs> is Ross Perot even still alive? Yeah, yeah. I think so. Really. Because he yeah. was like eight thousand years old in ninety two or whenever it was he ran. No, his his vice presidential candidate he died, but Ross Perot's Admiral Stockdale he died, but Ross Perot's still alive. I love that you are yeah. both fully aware of like no, I know Ross Perot's still alive. I've been keeping track. I know that he's alive. I I would remember if he died. No, he. I think he looks alive because yeah, I don't <laughs> remember hearing that because that would be a big one actually if he died. Like, we'd hear about it all over the place. Yeah, yeah. Now, speaking of He's dead... He's by the way, Ross Perot. We What's have that? a movie to talk about. Okay. No, no, there was a confirmation that Russ Perot is alive. Mm-hmm. He'll be appearing on the podcast next week. Let, I'm, let me just set hey, up for Google about alerts about Ross Perot one second. Okay, good to go. Okay. 
Okay, we're but like I said, speaking of dead, we have yeah. our movie to talk about. <laughs> yeah. I don't one remember the winter title. Proposal. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's I, I just had one winter written down. Now, I will freely admit to this. <laughs> so far, the year has not started out so good. No. no. You know. This was better than last week's movie. Wow. But geez. the bar the bar was low, to be fair. <laughs> yeah. But this was better than last week's movie. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. The only thing that I found entertaining from last week's movie was the the park ranger. Yeah. That's not possible. This trail's been closed for eight years. It's extremely dangerous. That park ranger? <laughs> yes. Her. I want to make a mix of that. <laughs> oh my god, somebody to totally that. should make an EDM mix of, of our favorite park ranger. That's not possible. This trail's been closed for eight years. It's extremely dangerous. <laughs> That's terrible. Why can't that can that woman make some effort? I mean, you know, you need, you need a little, you need a little lilt, a little up and downs there. It's <laughs> for the flat line. But the sad thing, she was the best thing out of the movie. Of course, she's great. She's the only one who knew what she was involved in, I guess. <laughs> so this week's movie, One Winter Proposal. Had you this seen the original? Because this was a sequel. This I had seen the original. This, this is a sequel? Yes. First of all, Les told us that last <laughs> week when he told us about the movie. But second of all, it was pretty obvious in this movie because they kept referencing what happened last time at the Lodge. So last movie was called oh, no. One Winter Weekend. <laughs> There's a movie before this? Oh, yeah. That's horrible. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. So you're not familiar yeah. with the One Winter Canon? No. Hmm. <laughs> well, get oh, no, ready because I'm sure there's going to be a right. one winter wedding next year. Oh, boy. Okay. <laughs> All right. I'm going to strap myself in here. So I'm we ready. start out, we though. We started. Yet. We're at the title. Okay, here we go. We start out, though, in Kerr, your, uh, for <laughs> the place where you used to live. Seattle. I did. I did. I lived there for a while. Wow. No. What's that? I didn't know it snowed in Seattle. I don't think bit. it snows too much. I think the winter I was there, I think it was a very moderate winter. Well, it was snowing in this movie. <laughs> well, it certainly so, was. Yes, I was so, excited to see that. It's like Seattle, I live there. Yes. Right. And so we see this happy woman <laughs> like it's snowing and this woman... Kara's, and then we see we see her her boyfriend, and obviously they're getting ready for New Year's Eve. She's wearing a crown, like her little New Year's Eve Happy New Year crown, and we find out that she wrote a book, and um, she's talking to her cute boyfriend Ben. She shows him, like, the galley of her book. The book is done. It's finished. And and they're talking about New Year's. And then we cut to Kara's sassy black friend, Megan. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But this movie, one thing I got to say about this movie is this movie was very ethnically diverse. Yes. Especially, it was. Like, where, an where... Asian assistant. Where Sassy Black Friend worked, I was like, wait, Sassy Black Friend has an Asian guy that she's walking with. Her boss was a, a woman of color. Her coworker was a woman of color. It was very diverse, and I was very happy about that. Like, I guess Hallmark after last year, Hallmark, the Hallmark Channel is really working on diversifying. Right. <laughs> very diverse. Yeah, I wrote, who directed this? Jesse Jackson? Seriously. But I'll go one step further. I'll go one step further. <laughs> uh, the sassy black friend, she was even more than a black friend. She was, she actually was like a main character. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. A so, main character, a person of color, like with a great job, like she ran shit. Yeah. Yeah. I'm still rooting for Indian people. Indian people are still, have not appeared in a Hallmark film that I've seen. Well, I bet Although, it'll happen soon. We I saw, mean... <laughs> 
<laughs> we yeah. saw one advertised with Amish people, though. There's an Amish Hallmark film. Maybe we need to get M. Night Shyamalan to direct a Hallmark movie because he always puts himself in his movies. <laughs> Who's that? M. Night Shyamalan. Oh, that's good. That's a good idea. There could be a, there could be a twist at the end. Yeah. <laughs> a twist they at the end. Kiss. <laughs> it was all a dream. They're all dead. <laughs> so, so, so Megan works for this magazine, right? And she's like, you know, so she's working for this magazine. And then we find out that Ben has this meeting with someone who's going to like, I guess, uh, ben runs a like um, a snowboard company, Snowboarding. Yeah. and so he has a meeting with this guy who is going to buy into the snowboard company or like buy the snowboard. And so um, he and he and Kara are going to the ski lodge for the weekend, and so Ben tells the guy and have our meeting at the lodge, and so. <clears throat> Then Megan, and so um, then we see Megan talking to her boss, and we find out that this magazine just started a travel section, and we find out that Megan has an issue with saying no. Like she can't say no. You ask her to do something, she'll do it. Yeah. What? What? One of my big problems with this movie was they kept making it seem like Megan was getting this work dumped on her and like she had no say in it. And really, like she kept volunteering for stuff. It wasn't right. even like they were offering and she's like, yeah, I'll do it. I'll do it. It was like she went to her boss and she's like, I want to be involved in the travel section. Right. Yeah. This- Every room she walked in, she probably would yeah, take so, on more and more responsibility. So she was working like three jobs at one. I couldn't feel for her character being overworked because I'm like, she wants that. She kept asking for it. Right. Exactly. So she agrees. So yeah, so she agrees to like take on the travel thing too, you know. Um, and then um, it, it's, I guess it's right before, it's, you know, it's New Year's Eve and I have... Kara is wearing a very ugly dress. Wait, who had the leopard, the, that leopard print thing? Is that Kara? She had that too. That was Kara, but, but Megan about, talked I thought her that to looked wear hot. Yeah. Really? I, I wrote that I thought that looked hot. Yeah, the leopard print. <laughs> leopard print is like lazy writer shorthand for slutty. So that's why, uh, okay. that's why you know, to the Hallmark audience, that's like, oh, you can't wear that. That's, that's you'll look like a trollop. True. True. So, <laughs> and then, and even well, Megan, an and impact, Megan though. was even like, because Megan went over to help her pick her outfits, and Megan was like, you can't wear leopard print. Like, she was very, like, Aww. disturbed by that, by the fact that she wanted to wear it. <laughs> um, so, um, they all go to this New Year's, so Megan, Ben, and Kara all go to this New Year's Eve party. And then Sean shows up, and Sean is Ben's friend, who is also black, um, and he's Ben's friend who is a doctor. Who we, we and, learned through the course of the movie, uh, he and Megan met last year at the lodge, because yeah. Megan literally oh. like ran into him and hurt her hand, and he like helped her and fixed her hand. So I'm guessing I'm, I'm guessing that Megan and Sean were in the last movie, but were much more secondary characters than they were in this one. Like this one, they were much more front and center. No, actually, they were front and center in the last movie too. Really, really, That's a lot so of main characters. I can't believe there was another movie. <laughs> yes. So, so basically, I, I what the last movie it. was, in a nutshell, was that. Kara and Megan rented the ski lodge, um, but when they got to the ski lodge, the person had like it was kind of like an Airbnb situation, and the person had double booked it. So Kara and Megan and Ben and Sean all had this um, Airbnb thing rented, and so they all decided to share for the weekend. 
And that's it. And hijinks happen. Yes. Hijinks. <laughs> okay. It just I just can't believe that exists. Well, no, I do, but it just seems so unnecessary. Um, but we find out <laughs> that like Sharon, that that Megan and Sean didn't work out because they were both very busy, and so they could never find time for each other. <laughs> and okay. so then we have the New Year's countdown. Ben and Kara kiss. Oh, I wrote. John is this Nagin. a New Year's? Is this a New Year's movie? Like, does Hallmark have? Is that a genre? Do they have the Christmas movies. They have, they have no, New it, Year's movies. It's part of the Winterfest genre. Now, now in, on the okay. Hallmark Channel, we are in Winterfest. Winterfest. Okay. So, so Winterfest goes out, goes on throughout the month of Jan of January. <laughs> okay. I want to know, like, until. I have so many things I need to start celebrating. I I I haven't been celebrating Winterfest. I haven't been celebrating uh, Toyota Thon or the, the what's no, the Honda event, the that. Honda something event. The, uh... <laughs> the <laughs> like there is all these like what fake event? events in marketing that I I feel like I need to just start putting up a tree and treating like it's I... a real thing. Because I don't know. It's because you guys know next month on the yeah, Hallmark Channel it's Hallmark. Valentine's month. Well, yeah. Oh, my Lord. Oh, great. So get ready. <laughs> Valentine's Month. Uh-huh. St. Patrick's Day month is after that? No, that no. after that is Spring Fling. Okay. And then Let's... after Spring Fling is June Brides Month. June. Okay. So I can't believe I got. Okay. Yeah. I'm invested. <laughs> What's July? <laughs> <laughs> July, after, August, and it just starts again. Is, is there September's, a point where the year just kind of ends? It just, no, is, there, is there a point where they – no? <laughs> no, because September is fall harvest. Yeah. Uh, the, like, no joke, Hallmark does an orig- at least one original movie every single week. Yes. Oh, okay. Yes. All right. So get ready because you're going to be busy. I cancel cable otherwise, so we better be checking <laughs> some advertisers here. Somebody better start advertising. <laughs> so, okay. Okay, so, that's fine. It's worth um, it. Okay. So we see Megan and Kara, and they're at this coffee shop, right? And they're hanging out, and we find out that Kara and, and Ben are going to go back to the ski place where they met last year. But they invite Megan to go... And Megan says, no, I can't go because I'm busy. And um, so she can't go. Hold on one second. My phone was going off. So, yeah, so she can't go because she's busy, right? Um, But then um, Kara kind of wears Megan down. And Megan says, well, okay. But I'll ask my boss. She wears her down with with a really descriptive uh, promise of fondue. Right. Mm. <laughs> now we never see fondue in the movie, so it was a big lie. Yes, we do. Oh, we do. We do. Okay. We Oops. fondue. All right. Sorry. Yeah. Sorry about that, everybody. I, I made a very strong <laughs> accusation there, and I was wrong. <laughs> I was promised fondue in this movie, and there was no fondue. Fondue. Fondue, eh? What's this, 1979? Ow! <laughs> okay. So so Ben is talking to Sean, and Ben is worried because he read Kara's book, and he thought – he felt that Kara's book was basically talking about his relationship, even though it was a detective novel. And he right. was – because at the end of the book, Kara changed the ending so that the couple broke up. No. <laughs> Could you imagine <laughs> having this concern? Also, when, when the two guys are having a conversation, it's almost like that's like that must be like a female fantasy of how two guys converse. Right. You know, it's two straight guys. Are they really really talking like that? I don't know. 
I mean, it, 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 it was my fantasy I later in the I, movie I, when they were conversing yeah. shirtless in the steam in the sauna. Oh yeah, yeah, I saw oh. that. Yeah, they had great bodies. Yeah, both of them. Yeah, I saw that. <laughs> we could talk about that but more. I later. have been having sensitive conversations with my male friends, although it hasn't been in steam rooms. <laughs> maybe so. Start. Maybe it's true. Maybe it's true. Maybe, maybe. <clears throat> I would like to see them in, in the sauna, shirtless, eating fondue. <laughs> well, that'd be the best place to do it. It'd keep it warm. Yeah, but it just melts all I over totally their, do their shirtless bodies. Yes. Oh, exactly. <laughs> yes. <laughs> exactly. Uh, so, um, I'm uncomfortable. Okay. <laughs> I don't know if it's the food element. It's just kind of, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> so, so we find out that Megan can come to the ski lodge, but she could only come for one day. Oh yeah, what a waste of time. Yeah. <laughs> and so then we're so then um, we're dry. So they're driving Ben and Kara, and he's practicing his pit. And um, as they're driving, I noticed the green screen was horrible. It was. There was a lot of bad green screen in this movie. Anytime <laughs> yeah, they were a in a car lift, or on the ski lift, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like, it was really bad green screen. I didn't even notice stuff like that, and it was bad. Because <laughs> it, it, the, when they were in the car, it looked like they were driving really fast. Like, really fast. <laughs> <laughs> like we have to get yeah, to the lodge down, now. Well, she only is going to be there for one day. Jesus, going to get there pretty quick. Get to make the most of that day. No, well, that wait, wasn't big. That Kara Car- yeah, 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 and Ben were were driving there really fast. Oh no, she's not even in the car. <laughs> so, so they get to the ski lodge, and it's the exact same same ski lodge they were at last year. And then Megan and Ethan, her the the Asian guy, Ethan shows up. And Ethan, I thought Ethan was actually cute as well. He was. Um, Ethan announces in the movie that he has a girlfriend and everybody's surprised because I, I, th- I thought he was a gay character and even like one of the characters said, because I said he, he, he has a girlfriend? One, one of the characters said the same thing. Yeah. <laughs> everybody was surprised. The people in the fictional characters in the movie were surprised. Yeah, when, when he first appeared on screen, I was like, oh, sassy black friend has the sassy gay friend. I, I thought that. I also thought Ben was gay when he first appeared on screen, though. <laughs> but with Ethan, because well. Ethan was wearing the shirt, which I actually thought was cute in the beginning that I'd wear. And it was definitely like a gay looking shirt. Like I could see myself wearing it, but I could not see Kurt wearing it. It's that this the standard like brightly colored button down shirt that they sell at, at, at Express that every gay wears as their work shirt. Yes, yes, I would totally wear that shirt. Okay, I'm wearing this sweatshirt today. <laughs> oh, so they're all standing in the living room, and so then Kara is like, um, "Oh, I need the medical tape." Wink, wink, nudge, nudge. And so since she knows that Megan mm. never says no, Megan was like, oh, I'll go get your medical tape for you. I'll go to the infirmary. So she goes to the infirmary, and guess who's working there? Sean. Sean. What? My guess and... right. That won a prize. So it's kind of like, you, you, what are you doing here? What are you doing here? Now, while this is going on, Ben is building a fire back at the place. And he needed to light the fire. And Kara's like, oh, I'll go get your lighter. And Ben's like, the lighter's in my shirt. So Kara goes to Ben's, or his jacket. And Kara goes into his jacket. And she doesn't find a lighter. She finds a receipt for a jewelry store. And you know what that means. An engagement. So well, hadn't, hadn't so Ben all- already told Sean that he was planning on proposing? 
I thought we knew that before the she she found the receipt. We knew that, but she didn't. Know. Right. We be, and because there was a moment too where like Ben got down on one knee to put a wine charm on her glass, and like we all as the audience yeah. were like, "Oh, there's a proposal coming." Right. That's weird. And it was yes, nah, not that early. And it was it was a wine charm. Um. So then, <laughs> um. <laughs> That's weird. Hey, are you really supposed to spend three months' salary on a wedding ring? Well, for straight people, it used to be two months. Is it three months now? Have we upped the the figure to three months? Somebody was talking about it on Joe Rogan's podcast, and I said it was three months. Yeah, for straight people, for gay people. I don't think it's because I, you know, my husband and I, we got our we got our wedding rings on Amazon. <laughs> okay. Well, did you guys have an engagement ring, or do you you just have wedding bands? No, we just have wedding bands. Yeah, because the the, 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 the the salary that's for the engagement ring. Because I, I didn't want it for me. My thought was, I'm like, well, I'm not a woman. I don't really need one. Right. I. Yeah, it's like, and because my thought was, I'm just going to be wearing a band anyway, so one band is enough, as far as I'm concerned. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, so then, um, Ben, so then, uh, Sean and Megan are catching up, and Sean lets it slip that Ben and Kara actually knew that he was working there the whole time. So... Sean goes back to the chalet with Megan, and um, when they get back, uh, Ethan walks in, and Sean gets jealous because he thinks that Ethan is um, Megan's boyfriend. And oh, that's when that. Kara's like, Not at all. You didn't? Oh, it was super obvious because Kara immediately was like, Oh, that's Megan's co worker. And he looked at he looked at Ethan very funny. Like he looked he had oh, a, he had okay. a look. Yeah. And then oh, that's okay. when Kara's like that's when Kara's like Ethan has a girlfriend and or someone said oh. Ethan has a girlfriend and then someone else looked at him like really. <laughs> that yeah I remember that because I was I was uh, surprised too. Yeah. And they're all eating grapes at this point. Well, because they right? haven't they haven't <laughs> melted any cheese well, to make fondue yet. Ah man, that cheese. Yeah. Is Makes me uncomfortable. It's the, <laughs> so that, so then Megan tells Kara. Megan, Megan tells Kara, "I know what you're doing. I know you're trying to set me up." And then Kara's like, "Guess what? I was digging through his pockets and I found a receipt." But then she said, yeah, "Enough to resize her ring." Right? Because she was like, "She's like, I looked at the price and it wasn't enough to buy a ring, but it was enough to, to resize a ring." For the next scene, I wrote, guys are talking about wedding dresses. Are we sure they like women? <laughs> well. Anyway, that's my observation. <laughs> They're pushing it a little too far. Guys aren't sitting around talking about wedding dresses. No. I mean, this is a fantasy. All you ladies out there watching this movie, you think this is real. There's nothing real. Actually, to be, they actually weren't talking about wedding dresses. Ben said that he, it, it, as part of the proposal, he got Kara a dress. And she was like, wait, you got the dress too? And it sounded at first like they were talking about wedding dresses. He just meant a, a dress for her to wear so that he could propose to her, which is oh. gayer than gay. Hey, ladies, yeah. you, you, let us go watch <laughs> go watch those, those insidious movies instead. You'll get more reality out of that than yeah. you will this. Like, as, as if, like, what? hey, yeah, I'm going to propose to you, but only if you're dressed like this. <laughs> But I gotta say, without revealing any spoilers, <laughs> looking at that dress, he was not gay. If you pick up that dress, that dress not a good the, dress. Uh, the... All right. Oh, okay. I, I get. I get <laughs> any doubts that I had when I saw the dress? I'm like, oh, he's straight. <laughs> okay. Well, that's good then. At least that adds some credibility. Ethan and Megan go to the ski slopes 
to start taking pictures for the magazine. And once again, oh, so then Ethan says, oh, so Sean shows up, <laughs> Sean shows up and then Ethan's like, oh, I forgot something back at the cabin. Wink, wink, nudge, nudge. And Ethan like, runs away. And once again, we have more horrible green screen. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think that was Ethan trying to give them time alone, though. I think that was the writer's way of putting Sean and uh, Megan alone so they could be on the ski lift together. The ski lift that was, like, going, like, 100 miles an hour. Oh, yeah. I had to catch up to that car. (laughs) I had to get up a steep hill. (laughs) So so then... So then we see Kara, and she's looking over the balcony, and she sees this woman on a snowboard, and the woman's having trouble. Yeah. Now, I thought this was a child. Maybe I was too far away from the TV. (laughs) And any glasses. I didn't know this was a woman. I thought she was watching a child struggling. We're jumping ahead a little bit, though. We haven't talked about the the magical helmet. (gasps) Oh, wait, no, that's coming up. Oh, okay. No, no, that's coming up. I, I wrote down every everything I saw. <laughs> the next thing is this child struggling. That okay. was a woman. <laughs> so, so Ethan's <laughs> taking pictures, and Megan's, like, being very type A and, like, just basically bugging him. And Sean says, Megan, I have something to show you. And she gets him away oh, yeah. because he also saw that she was bugging poor Ethan while he was trying to get his work done. Yeah, he calls her out for a but, hovering. Yes. But then, you know, they're walking, and then, of course, they have a snowball fight, you know. Uh, they also um, stopped, to look, they stopped to look at the view, and we, the audience, couldn't see the view. They never showed no. us what they were looking at. No. I guess they can get enough green screen for the view. <laughs> so Ethan's <laughs> taking pictures of them having their snowball fight, checking out the view, being romantic and not knowing it, basically. Yes. And then Sean invites her to go to lunch, and Megan's like, no, I got to go back to Seattle. Sorry. Oh, well. All right, now comes the helmet. Yeah. And so, yes, because um, – we're so, yeah, we're back at the ski lodge, and Kara's trying out Sean's snow – like the snowboard that Ben made. Then um, – um, Oh, and then Ben gives her, yeah, Ben's like, I've got, oh, Kara's like, do you have a surprise for me? Like, hinting about the ring. And Ben is like, yes. And then he gives her the magic helmet. And what and makes the, it magical. <laughs> and it has a yes. ponytail hole. Yes. Which, back when I had longer dreadlocks, I would have loved a helmet like that. It, it would probably have exists. I would think it would exist. If not, let's invent it and patent it. Bring well, it in Shark Tank. I'm sure now Hallmark has probably patented it and it's on sale somewhere. I'm, I'm yeah, going to well. patent one with a mohawk hole. Ooh, that yeah. would be cool. A mohawk hole? Yeah. I'm going to just make a big fat helmet for your whole head with eye holes so you can wear a helmet when you go rob a bank <laughs> on your bike. <laughs> anyway, hey, by the way, ladies, um, ladies and gentlemen who are watching this 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 movie, um, in a situation like this, when a guy has started like a wacky business like this, if this doesn't succeed, his woman will probably leave him. Because I've seen this happen before. Just just want to give some advice out there to people. Right now, she's supportive, but she's hanging in there because she thinks this could really take off. But a couple years down the road, when this thing is like burning out. She'll be like, look, I'm, I'm out of here. That, <laughs> that element of reality never seeps into the Hallmark movies. Like no, when somebody, when somebody takes a yeah. big risk like this, the big risk always pays off. Yeah, that bag. would be more lifetime. Like she'd well, leave him and then he'd go and like stab her. <laughs> just for some people out there who aren't – or disconnected from reality, I'm trying to, I'm trying to link the realities together. So I don't know if I'm doing any good. It's a public service message. Thank you. Hey, Thank follow you, your dreams, people. Follow your dreams, though, okay? you got to do it. you got to make it happen. <laughs> oh, so, then, 
So then we see Kara and Megan, and they're having um, they're they're having like lunch or dinner or something. And Kara is bummed, and then she asks Megan about Sean, and we could we tell that Megan likes him. And then we see Ben talking to Sean, and he's still worried about the book ending the way that it ended, and. At the same time, he's trying to play matchmaker with Sean and Megan as well. Matchmaker, matchmaker, make me a match. And then Megan sees Sean walking with a woman, and you could tell she starts getting a little jealous herself. Ooh. But then when she follows them, he's actually in the infirmary, and he's giving the woman, like, a sling for her arm because she hurt her arm. And then... Megan is in Sean's office, and she's like, Sean, guess what? I decided to stay. Hmm, hmm, hmm. Ooh. Hmm. And um, so then we see, you know, Ethan. Ethan has more to shoot. And then, oh, then Kara sees the woman tripping over the snowboard again. Yeah. And this is Kara helps her out. This is when I... Figured out she was a woman. I said this. I said the kid is still having issues. No, this is a woman. So this yeah, is where I, I, I actually it. initially thought it was a kid too, and we only saw her from a distance. I wasn't sure that it was an adult. Now at this scene, See? once Kara started talking to this woman, I was like, I know exactly who this woman is. I did too. I immediately. Uh, knew. I thought she I was knew. Maria Bamford. You know Maria Bamford? That's who this like woman Maria reminded Bamford. me of. Yeah, I love it, yeah. No, I, I, I just mean like, I, and I think this is what Les means too. Uh, we knew yeah, I know. who her character was in the movie. Like, what her relation to the movie was going to be. Yes. Okay, well, I admit I did not. I wasn't, I wasn't thinking that far ahead. But you guys um, are on it. And then, so like, we find out she's having trouble. She's actually pretty cool. Like, she's a cool lady. Yeah. Um, and She's, they're talking. This, this and Rando is there with her husband. Right. She's there with her husband. And, you know, like she's like an empty nester. And, you know, um, Kara agrees to help her out. And then, you know, it's, you know, she's talking about like enjoying life and getting out of your comfort zone. Yada, 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 blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. And, um, we also learn that she's an event planner, which doesn't come in in this movie, but I have a feeling that when they make the third one, that oh, she'll be planning no. a wedding. She'll be back. Yeah. She I will have a much true. bigger part in the third one. Yes. You have to plant the seeds. I have that they asked her something like, she said she, she was like learning how to snowboard or something, and, and they said, uh, why now? They asked Lisa that, like, why now? And that's like, why she, when she mentioned, like, oh, my daughter just went to college, oh, okay. and I'm like trying to learn new things. Okay, but yeah, and you can tell the way that the character is acting; she's definitely like set, up, like they're setting it up. Yeah. Okay. So then Megan calls her boss, and the boss, the boss is actually happy that she's staying. Like her boss loves her. Yeah. Like, loves her. <laughs> so yes. the boss is like, well, while you're there, we need video, too. And because now the boss, like, no, she's not going to say no. So I'll just ask her to do whatever I want, and she'll do it. <laughs> I wrote, this is a cheap-ass magazine with no actual budget. Like, what kind of magazine is like, yeah. we're going to launch an entire new section, and we're going to have our operations manager, who has no background in editorial, uh, <laughs> we're going to have her oversee this whole new section of a magazine. Right. Yeah. She doesn't seem to know she's doing this woman who runs the magazine. Oh, you want to do it? You're hired. Um. So Kara's like worried. <laughs> Kara's like worried about her book. Yeah. And because we find out later it sucks. Right. Yeah. We find out the book totally sucks. But at this point, she's <laughs> worried that it sucks. As but, she should. And she's very astute. Because <laughs> it hasn't been validated that it's like 
have like being insecure and then later we find out it really does suck. like she was right yeah. <laughs> well to be fair we only we we find out that part of it sucks well what's it's the big part it's the part with the words <laughs> right <laughs> uh, just being mean it's a fictional book i okay, give you a break people stop don't send me angry angry tweets at at kurt underscore fits you finally figured it out <laughs> i looked it up i looked up what my twitter was because last week i didn't have it yeah i looked it up do you have a link so, from your oh website, www, period? Nobody wrote me. I didn't get one message. Nobody wrote me a thing. So what's the point? What's the point? That's why I'm angry. So I'm, so I'm taking it out on this woman's fake book and saying it's awful. So nobody's, I get to go one email all week. <laughs> okay, go ahead. Oh, so Ben has a meeting, and I wrote here, and I guess I shouldn't say... Because it's a spoiler. So I won't say what it is. All right. But basically, I wrote, I bet I know who he's meeting. Yada, yada. <laughs> so, um, oh. so then Megan is giving Sean a hard time because of his job. And. Make fun um, of his pager. What was that? She yeah, makes we... fun of his pager. She like goes on and on and on, like making fun of pager and how they're outdated, uh, which would make sense in any other context. But aren't pagers still super common in the medical field? Yes. Yeah, they are. Because it's like because like it's because of like the radiate not the radiation but the mag the magnetic machines or whatever that's going on. So people in the medical field use pagers. And. Uh. It's and especially since they were up in a mountain and I'm sure cell service is kind of shaky there and you can't depend on it, a pager is something that definitely would work. Yeah. So basically no, well, Megan is a nice. terrible person <laughs> who doesn't <laughs> want anybody nice. to be taken a lot of... care of by the medical field. <laughs> no, that woman's got a mean streak. She says a lot of nasty things. and I don't know if I would tolerate that. <laughs> I'd say enough out of you. I don't want to be. I don't want some mean, nasty woman ripping me apart every five minutes. Mm. Uh, but then they so they they talk, and they're basically like, "Why didn't we work out? Why wouldn't we didn't we work out?" And they were both because basically you're mean, stupid. nasty. Okay. Or, okay because that's because you're mean. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're mean. You made fun of my page here. <laughs> so so while they're hashing things out. Sean gets a phone call from Nikki, and Megan starts to get jealous. But then we find out that Nikki is Sean's niece, his 15-year-old niece. She's coming to visit. Wasn't there a song called Darling Nikki? Wasn't there a song called Darling Nikki on the yes. Purple Rain soundtrack? Yes. Yes, and it's filthy. Okay, good. Just, just I don't think right. Darling Nikki was 15. No. <laughs> Well, uh, also, uh, uh, all right, in all right, this all right. same scene, and this should have been your clue that there was another movie, Kurt, is that Sean says, like, hey, like, why can't it just be, like, last time when we were in the lodge? And he, I, he literally says something along the lines of, like, let's replay our hits. In other words, like, let's hit all of the same beats that we hit in the last movie because that's why we're all here right now. No, yeah. I'm completely oblivious. I had no idea that there was a previous movie. I still and I'm still find it hard to believe. Well, no, I believe it. Okay, my conversation with myself is done. Meanwhile, okay. Ben has Ben is all ready for his meeting with Porter, the guy who's the business guy. But and so they start Porter. to meet. But then Porter gets a call, and Porter's got to go. Yeah. There's an emergency, and Porter's like, I got to go by, and just like runs out of the room. <laughs> and then okay. the next scene, we have Megan and Kara and Lisa, who's the lady that was on the snowboard. The rando. Oh, yeah. And they're yeah. all sitting around a table. And guess what they're eating, Kurt? Fondue. Right. Yes. Yeah, which I guess I didn't notice. I think I was sitting too far away from the TV. And I need glasses. So there's certain like details in those I miss. 
<laughs> so, so they're chatting, and then Lisa's. Well, and they're Lisa getting photographed by Ethan as they eat their fondue. Right. Ethan's just taking yeah. pictures. And so, so Lisa says to Megan, you know, oh, you have a thing for that guy that works here. And then, um, you know, make it. Then Lisa like, make, and you're making this complicated. And then Kara starts up, and then Lisa's like, "Oh, you shut up because you have issues too." Yeah, Lisa got on my nerves. She's a big know-it-all. She should shut her mouth. <laughs> you did like, not like these people. <laughs> I'm pissed. I'm telling you. <laughs> All right, like, cause she's gonna be I'll, in the third I'll, one. I'll, I'll focus. I'll focus on my breathing a little bit. Okay. <laughs> Lisa is gonna have a much bigger Fuck, role I mean, in the third one. Yeah. Well, she. Be, I, if, you know, listen. I'm not in favor of that. Look, any sequel, you've got to go bigger and better than the last one. There's right. gonna be a lot, a down. lot more bad CG in the next movie. I'm trying to scale scale back on my own a little bit here. There's okay. gonna probably be a scene where Sean's niece Nikki like walks in slow motion away from an explosion. <laughs> I have a, a screener of Green Book. I haven't watched. Uh, True Detective is on. Uh, I haven't kept no time to watch any of that, but I'm watching this, and that just you know, I'm just it's building up inside me. Speaking of building up inside, <laughs> Megan gets a call. <laughs> <laughs> oh man that made it all worthwhile Maggie gets a call from her assistant Amanda and Amanda's like okay I read your friend's book and your friend's book sucks <laughs> <laughs> I love it. And I had I gave it a review, and it's not good. And so, um, oh. um, so yeah. So then Megan's got to deal with that, right? And she starts mm-hmm. telling Sean about it. Yes. Oh yeah, and yapping then, away about it. And, oh, and so yeah, she's telling Sean about it. And then while she's telling Sean about it, Kara walks into the room, but they don't know that she's there. So she hears that her book sucks. <laughs> well, she wrote it. She must know. She must have had some kind of clue. By the way, when we finally hear this review, I mean, I'm skipping ahead. It's not that bad. It's not bad at all. That's what I said. It's yeah. really bad. I had a review in Edmonton. Someone wrote the headline was "One Man Train Wreck," and this woman's complaining about her review. Oh, a review which she hasn't read yet. Okay. Which both Megan hasn't read it, and Kara A isn't supposed to know about it yet, <laughs> but B hasn't read it either. True, but I get why Megan didn't read it. I totally understand because then that way, if you don't read it. Then when you get busted for it later, you're like, I didn't know. I didn't read it. Yeah. What are you no. talking about? <laughs> I don't know. Oh, audience, I've, I've had good reviews as well. Okay. So just let you know. Okay. <laughs> Very good reviews. I've read I some have, of your reviews. I had that one that I have had some good ones, but I just wanted to tell the audience because they're going to think I just have bad reviews. <laughs> like I'm uh, this woman in this movie. I forget her name. <laughs> anyway. Oh, Kara. Kara. Oh, so then, yep, yep. So then, Nikki, Sean's nephew, shows up. Wait, wait, wait and first, like, wait, we missed a great moment. It's where what? Kara's doubting herself because she overheard this conversation with Megan and Sean, and so she goes to Ben and she's telling him that she heard this, and like Ben's trying to reassure her, and like starts name checking all these authors and all these bad reviews that all these famous authors have gotten. Like he's a walking Rotten Tomatoes of literature. Oh yeah, but you know what? So yeah, oh that's right. Because then he said like the Great Gatsby, um, on the road, and then but then when he mentioned Moby Dick, I hated Moby Dick. So I had to agree with the critics on Moby Dick 
The only Moby Dick I liked was when, remember when the Flintstones di- went to Moby Dick? No. No, they went to Moby Dick? Well, because remember the Flintstones, they were taking a tour and they went on this ship and Captain Ahab was actually their captain on the ship and then Moby Dick tried to... <laughs> To try to topple what? their boat over. Was this a later season yeah. Great no. Gazoo episode? <laughs> no. Oh, no. No, 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 Samantha Stevens was on there. Remember that? I do remember that, yes. Samantha that Stevens. That Is this where the kids were growing up? Where Bam Bam and, and the no. Pebbles no. were like, they were like, they were like high school? No, they were still babies. Was remember there remember the time? Dick? Remember the time, like, the later episodes of the Flintstones when they started having, like, guest stars? Yeah. Those were like, the great gazoo years. That's that's what the show had completely jumped the, maybe not the shark, but the the Moby Dick. Because remember, because, like, remember because Tony Curtis was on, like, Stony mm-hmm. Curtis. Stony Curtis, yeah. <laughs> and then oh, yeah. <laughs> the Beach Boys went to visit them. They remember did. Anne Margaret? Remember Anne Margaret? Uh-huh. Yes. No. You don't remember when Anne Margaret was on there? Aunt Margaret no. Anne Margaret was like driving her sports car and then she got a flat tire and so then she went and she was like pretended to be the babysitter and she was like she pretended to be the nanny and then she gave them tickets to the Holly Rock Bowl and they were like, What's she doing on stage? And it was Anne Margaret and she sang a song. Huh? Oh. And this was the era that they that they went to Moby Dick? Okay. Yeah. And the Beach Boys. Or the Beach and then the Way Out. Around there too. Uh, the Way Out. Anyway, way Kurt. Out. Let's review an episode yeah, of the, the way out. for next week. What's the Way Out? <laughs> Can they sing the song? We're going the Way Out. Way Out! Oh, okay. Was this a Brian Wilson era Beach Boys? Or what, what, like what era was this here? This was um... Looking at. It was like the late '60s, so maybe it was maybe Brian Wilson was in that Flintstone and then, studio. And then remember, then Samantha, yeah, Samantha and Darren moved next door. The first Darren, not the second Darren. <laughs> Dick York, Dick Sargent. Yeah, it was Dick York. Uh, oh, Dick York. Okay, okay. No, I don't remember any of this. Um, yeah, yeah. Was that like because I remember a uh, Scooby Doo did that for a year where they had uh, they had special guest stars. Us, uh, Sonny and Cher were on an episode, and the monkey. And there was like a haunted, yeah, Sonny and Cher were on it, and there was like a haunted door was like going back and forth, and Sonny says the door it's swinging, and Cher said it's about the only thing around here that is. I do remember that. <laughs> So clearly, someone at Hanna Barbera was like a talent booker that would get these big names on the Hanna Barbera cartoons. He knew people. Yeah, I guess he did. The Flintstones was a prime time show. Yeah, and then and then remember the one guy that would go, "Yes, Mrs. Flintstone." (laughs) No, but that and he was on "I Love Lucy." The guy, because there was this guy that was on "I Love Lucy." Yeah. And he'd go, yes. He was on the book show. Was that Gail Gordon? <laughs> yes. I, I remember that character. Yeah. <laughs> and that guy made an entire career. He made like an entire career out of going, yes. Because then he was on like Sanford and Son doing the same thing. <laughs> he was. <laughs> remember that guy that used to say, there's one guy. He made his career. He made his career going. Well, you could call me Ray. Oh, I you remember could him. Call me this, yeah. and you. <laughs> I remember him. <laughs> okay, he's good commercials. I forget his name. <laughs> he had a song. There's a song where there's like you hear music in the back, and all you hear is, and you could call me Ray, and you could call, and then like these singers pop in and sing a chorus. <laughs> Think about all the oh residuals though. Like, seriously, like, for doing that. Like, milk and an idea. Yeah. You know, I, I think in our era, it's going to be Flo, who's going to be like. <laughs> no, I think Flo in our era, it's, 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 it's people like that are internet sensations for a minute. It's the, uh, the Cash Me Outside girl, stuff like that. <laughs> okay. I just <laughs> read a disgusting Newman story about the Cash Me Outside girl. She just got some kind of endorsement deal for like ninety thousand dollars. 
Oh. That was like two years ago. Who even cares oh, what she it. thinks that's now? It. No, she's got like a rapper. <clears throat> she's like a pretty she because she's known as like bad baby and she's got like a good rapping career well she probably has a social media following you can if you have a decent social media following you can get decent money for posting something all this uh, for talking shit on dr phil yeah cast me outside yeah i remember that's yeah I, I wrote a TV series that's yet to be produced and i have a role for her she's in like three episodes why of, are you of the giving show, her so work she's... I it's it, she's supposed to cast me outside. It's it's great. Don't you want the <laughs> this guy in your show? I think that guy's probably dead. He is so dead. Options are limited. Unlike yeah, Ross Perot, dead. who yeah. is alive. Who Ross Perot? Ross yeah. Perot. Yes. Yeah. 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 Well, you could call me Ray, or you could call me Sam. <laughs> Okay. Wow. Anyway, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, that was the history of entertainment. <laughs> <laughs> Nikki. So Nikki. <laughs> yeah. So so Nikki shows and up I'm and she's a temp job. Right. <laughs> okay. Go ahead. Go ahead. Hey, I drove for I drove for Postmates today. <laughs> oh, Jesus. And we're talking about these people. I need to limit uh. myself. So, so Nikki, Nikki shows up, and Nikki's a nice kid, and Nikki and Megan actually get along, and um, you know she's like they're having fun with her, and then um, she finds out that Megan works for a magazine, and she's impressed with that, um, and then this is also around the time that oh wait. Uh, oh. Meanwhile, Kara is like, wait, oh no, oh, we talked about that already. That's how we got on this tangent. Hold on. Sean, second. Megan, and Nikki, Where they win we? a trivia contest. Yes. Where's the, oh, trivia. Yes, I have that. Okay. And, and they won and an Oscar. Yeah, they won like a little Oscar because yeah. they won the trivia yeah. contest. Only time that's ever going to happen. And ouch. And oh, so Nikki. Oh, then so like the day is over, and Nikki's parents are picking her up, and then Nikki whispers into Sean's ear, "You were right about her." And Megan heard her say this, and so then Megan's like smiling, and she starts to like you know soften up towards him and meanwhile Ethan is still like in the background like shooting pictures of them and um, then later Ethan and Megan are looking at the pictures right and um, what, if, I, what if getting outside of ourselves can touch our hearts was that Megan Someone said that. I don't, hmm. I don't know how oh, that yeah, she said that to Ethan because, like, she started to realize that, you know, she's falling in love with him and that she's, like, starting to relax and stuff. Because yeah. then she tells Ethan, okay, you're done. You can go home and I'm going to stay. And I'll just get a ride off with someone. Yeah. Oh, okay. And so then Kara and Megan are chatting. And then the book review comes out. Uh, the book review comes up, mm -hmm. and Kara's like, okay, I know that my book, like, you guys think that my book sucks, the reviewer sucks, and Megan is like, actually, I read the review, and maybe you want to read it. Um, and so, um, Megan, it's, but then Kara's like, no, I don't want to look at it. Um, so then, Ben, it, oh, Oh, so then we see Ben. He's working. Um, Kara, like, start, like, Kara goes in to talk to him. She asks him if she could use his surfboard um, and the helmet as well. Snowboard, you mean? Snowboard, yeah. Snowboard and then the ponytail helmet, too. Mm -hmm. um, so... Then, oh, because then she takes it to her friend to give Lisa, like, she puts the helmet on Lisa, 
and then Lisa uses a snowboard, and actually, even though, like, Lisa snu sucked at snowboarding, with this snowboard, she could actually snowboard. Like, she was fine. Yeah. And so then Lisa... No, oh, so then um, Kara's talking to Lisa, and Lisa's like, oh, my God, thank you for teaching me. And Kara says, oh, well, everyone starts somewhere. And then oh. she has an idea. Oh, wait a minute. Hey. And then... And everyone starts somewhere. She's like, Ben, you know, she runs back to Ben, like, you can use this. Um, so she's running back to tell Ben... Megan and Sean are eating marshmallows by the fire. Indoors. They start chatting. Mm -hmm. They realize that yeah, they were both right. too busy for each other. Um, Megan says, well, the reason why she works is because she's afraid that if she doesn't work hard, it's going to go away. And then they realize that maybe the reason why they were both so busy was because it was a way to avoid taking a risk. Hmm. Which is true. Mm -hmm. Yes. Well, that's that at least is something that I can agree with. I mean, that's reality. That that could actually happen. Right. Yeah, I actually thought this that was true. that was one of the more real moments I've ever seen in a Hallmark movie. Like that that's a a real thing that happens to people. Is like they they sort of like run away from each other and for no other reason than like I, I don't want to get too close because what if we are close then? What happens next? So then we go back to Ben and Kara, and they're talking about his snowboard, and he was saying that, like, his whole thing is he wanted to make his snowboard accessible and affordable for everybody. And then they get on the topic of the book, and then Ben asks Kara, well, why did you change the ending of your book? Because initially, your book had the couple getting together, but then you changed it to the couple breaking up. And Kara was like, well, I changed it because my publisher told me to change it, which is legit. Mm -hmm. And then mm -hmm. Ben gets an attitude because he was like, well, aren't these characters based on us? And Kara's like, no. And then wow. she thinks, she accuses him of getting cold feet. And then she says, well, I found the receipt in your pocket. And then Ben gets pissed because Ben's like, I can't surprise you with anything. But how could he get pissed at her when he was the one that told her to go into his pocket to find the light? Yeah. She wasn't snooping on purpose. Right. Right. I do think it was dumb of her to even tell him that she knew, though. True. No, it was. I agree with you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, oh, so then we get to this. We get to the sauna scene, which was I can D. Very homoerotic. I wrote Ben and Sean are in the sauna shirtless. Hello, Hallmark Channel. Right, because they were like under. They had like uh, they were like undercover good body guys. Mm -hmm. I had mm -hmm. no idea under those shirts because both of them had like washboard abs. Like it was good. Yeah. And then they have this never... moment where they proclaim that the other each other is their hero. Yes. Oh boy. I'm like this is the most homoerotic moment in a Hallmark movie ever. <laughs> I like it. Really was because they're like shirtless in this in the sa uh, sauna. They're like you're my hero. You're my hero. And they're smiling at each other. And I was just now, waiting for that. I, I guess. Are Hallmark movies are they big in the gay community? Uh, I don't think so. I think in the the sort of camp factor in which uh, Les and I sort of watch them, maybe, but I I don't think it's it's not something like every gay guy's like, oh, you got to watch Hallmark this week and you got to see this movie. It's like if it's on, it, it, they'll watch it as background noise, right? And like, and and okay. and I didn't know if like you. Expect Experience this, Jason, but like after doing this podcast, all of a sudden there's all these closet Hallmark watchers. Like people don't admit it oh, that yeah. they do watch. I, I have friends that I never in a million years would have uh, thought like these movies. They're like, no, I watch them every week. <laughs> wow. 
<laughs> well, if they have more scenes yeah, like they're that, like, like that, they're like, oh, okay. yeah. If they have more scenes like that homoerotic steam room scene, I think they this will be more movie like that. successful in the, in the community. What's that? They need a whole movie like that. Well, they'll reach they'll reach an audience. Oh, so then Megan and Kara are talking, and they're talking yeah. about the fight, and then Kara's like, "Well, he thinks that I based the couple on us. How stupid is that?" And Megan's like, Ew. "Um." You did base it on you guys. And, eh, and then Karen, and then Karen fiction thinks about is it. Fiction. Do, do you think? Yes, I do. You wrote you you wrote a fictional story. It's fiction. Even if you did like loosely base it on somebody, it's still it's fiction. Remember that movie Storytelling? You ever see that? No. No. Okay. Is Anne Margrock in it? No. <laughs> Conan O'Brien has a role in it, though. Really? Yeah, yeah. you should see this movie. Storytelling. Look it up. It's really, it is something else. <laughs> okay. Oh, so they're, so they're talking, and Megan, Megan is very deep in this movie because... Megan is like, well, maybe you sabotaged yourself without knowing it because sometimes we do that. Sometimes we sabotage ourselves without knowing that we're sabotaging ourselves. Mm -hmm. I think it was very deep. Mm -hmm. And then Megan is like, okay. you know what? You really need to read this review. And then, yeah, like we talked about, Kara reads the review and it actually wasn't bad. Yeah, basically the no, reviewer is like, good. this is the best book I've ever read, except the ending undid everything I just read. Right. Which you I, actually I was read that review. <laughs> Not bad. Yeah. Uh, there's like, a little she, montage uh, going on. Oh, sorry, there's a little montage going on while we're hearing the review. Yes. Not a makeover montage, though. Sorry, Les. No. Well, okay, good. this movie, believe it or not, her clothes were so ugly that it would have done a disservice to a makeover montage. Well, maybe a makeover montage would have inspired the costume people to be like, we need to step it up. Maybe. Yeah. At this point, I was just ready for the movie to be done. Hmm. <laughs> this was no crazy rich Asians with the montage. This was not. The award-winning crazy rich Asian. What did it by win? The way. It's a Golden Globe? all these different, like, smaller awards as well, like these different critics' awards and stuff. Mm -hmm. I think it's going to win an Oscar. It'll be My nominated. Award I, I, I don't see it winning, to, um, but it'll win if it's yeah. nominated. Uh, I'm it's, voting for Better Call Saul uh, SAG Awards right now. Really? That was really good. Yeah, I liked it. It anyway. is good. It is good. Yeah. Oh, okay. So then we – so then Megan decides to go skiing, and there's more bad green screen again when she's <laughs> going up the ski lift. Like she's shooting up the ski lift like she's going into space. <laughs> well, she's on yeah. SpaceX, so it's a – you know. Wants to get Elon Musk. Do you, cross -reference do you think the super fast green screen is a simulation of what it's like to go through Elon Musk's uh, tunnel? Right. Yeah. Elon Musk was probably really into this movie. Yeah. He's an odd guy. He probably does watch this kind of stuff. He's like a <laughs> this helmet gets... with a ponytail <laughs> hole. Why didn't I think of that? <laughs> this is where he gets his ideas. He watches this movie. go, mm, a super a high speed ski lift. I have to go invent that. <laughs> um, so then okay so then Kara goes and sees Ben and she says something you know blah 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 and then, <laughs> oh, then they start on. talking keep about effort the... going. keep a little effort going she did that done. really weird <laughs> okay. bird on the shoulder <laughs> metaphor right yeah bird, exactly she did like the metaphor thing <laughs> And then we find out, she starts talking about her friend Lisa, and then we find out what I guessed the minute Lisa came on screen, that Lisa was 
Porter's wife. Yes. yes. And I knew that immediately. Like, the minute she showed up, I'm like, oh, she's the guy's wife. UTFO had a song called Lisa Lips. That's Lisa Lips. <laughs> UTFO, man. Okay, go ahead. So, oh, so then Megan Skeen, <laughs> she gets a phone call from her boss, and her boss is very happy with her, and then the boss is like, well, guess what? I got more for you to do. And Megan says, uh, no. For the first time ever, she says no. All right. And the boss was actually happy she said no. The boss was like, okay, fine. Yeah, because she's happy with anything she hears. Then Megan actually does Ethan a solid. And she's like, you know what? You really need to give Ethan a promotion because he does. he's overqualified for his job anyway. So then Ethan gets a promotion, so everyone's happy. Yeah. Ethan goes from being Megan's oh, assistant okay. to being the editor of an entire section of a magazine. Right. Good for him. Yeah. It's work it, dream. work it, work it. So then Megan is He's skiing. He's a crazy rich Asian. Megan is skiing. Sean is looking at his cell phone. Megan crashes into him. And it basically was the reverse of how they met in the last movie. Mm -hmm. Except he didn't hurt his arm. Um... Then we then we're back at the meeting. Ben is with um, Porter. Porter, and they're talking about the board. And then Porter looks out the window. Uh, she can see him as she's going down the mountain, <clears throat> and he's very impressed with his wife snowboarding. And then Ben says. Everybody starts somewhere. And then they and say, then, I'm not Lisa. My <laughs> name is Julie. Lisa <laughs> left you years ago. <laughs> okay. All right. I know we're trying to wrap it up. So here we go. I remember that song. Yeah. Uh -huh. And then Ben gets the deal. <laughs> And then Sean and Megan fall in love. And right. then and Sean says have, he's like, going to move back whole... to the big city, which is like a reverse of what normally happens in these movies. Exactly. He's like, he's like, I'll dump my job here, and I can get my old job back at the hospital. Let's do it. Yeah. Not only moving to the big city, but it's the guy moving for the girl, which yeah, I right. was just like, yeah, why can't the guy the move hell? for the girl? Why is the girl always got to move back to the dumpy old small town for the guy? Yeah. You live in a ski slope. You're going to end up like Jack Nicholson in The Shining. Exactly. <laughs> then Kara calls her boss or her publisher and changes the ending back. And then we have a long, drawn-out proposal scene with an ugly dress and rose petals and books okay. and library cards and all this stuff. And an actual song then, budget. They had, like, an actual known song. The song that was from Smiley. Yeah, the Christina Perry song, uh, A Thousand Years. Oh. It's from Twilight. Oh God! And then they got. And he proposed, and of course she said yes. Mm. The end. The end. And did you find oh yourselves? At the like, okay, so Kara and Ben get engaged. We knew that was going to happen, but were you like, wait, Sean and Megan don't even get a kiss to consummate the fact that they're like? Yes, I was. I was like, what? Yes, what kind I of Hallmark was. movie is this? You gave us the tease earlier in the movie that they can't kiss at midnight because they're not together, and you know, God forbid, a Hallmark movie have people kiss before they decide that they're going to be a couple, and then the movie just yeah. ends. I was like, that was right. a cheat. Yes, I thought the same thing. Yeah, that's bad. I thought nobody the same seems to be thing. doing it. 
Nobody Not, seems to be doing. Oh, never in Hallmark movies. Nobody's bumping uglies. No. Nobody's bumping uglies, but they're making commitments though. I'm gonna move. You better, <laughs> you better bump an ugly or two to make sure everything is okay before you start moving. Well, talking places. about speaking of bumping uglies, I've already picked out our lifetime movie. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you, you've mastered the segue. <laughs> Now, this is a Lifetime movie. We're watching it in real time. Oh, I still don't have a DVR. Is, I'm working this on This is it. a movie, actually. It's, it's, a his, it's, it's about a real historical figure. And this movie is taken from the headlines. And this, is a, this movie is a fictional account of a true story. Are you ready? Yes. The movie that we are watching ne for next week is called Escaping the Madhouse, the Nellie Bly story. Starring <laughs> Escape, Christina Escape, Escaping Ritchie. Escaping the what? Okay. Escaping the Madhouse, the Nellie Bly story. The Madhouse. Okay. Starring Christina Ricci and Judith Light. Oh, I love Judith Light. Yes. Oh, now, are you guys familiar with Nellie Bly? The name no. sounds familiar, but I don't know the story. So Nellie Bly was a girl was a, was like the first girl report. She's kind of like the lowest lane of the 1800s. And so her big thing, her two, her big what her but the, the thing that made her famous is she went undercover and in this insane asylum and pretended to be insane to, like, do an expose. So she's kind of like Geraldo, before Geraldo. Wow. Okay. So she did, like, this expose about, like, insane asylums. And then she also, another thing that, that back in the day, this was around the time that a hundred, the Around the World in 80 Days came out. So she was like, well, I'm going to go around the world and beat the 80 day record and so she went around the world in 60 days yeah i know her from that that's why i knew the name okay oh. and then she met jules verne like at the end of it wow now is if you judith want light... to go ahead oh judith light... basically this movie is about nelly bly in the insane asylum and judith light is the woman who runs the insane asylum okay. i do fear that based on the actual good caliber of talent that we know in this, both Christina and Judith, that this isn't going to be trashy, fun like Lifetime normally is, and it might actually be a decent movie. Well, it, no, yeah, no, 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 because it, Judith, Judith Light's the who's the boss woman, right? Yeah, but she yeah. does a lot of like prestige she's a, stuff now. No, she's on. Wait. She's on. Uh, Transparent. That's yeah. a great show. She's she's great on it. Yeah, and, and she was also in that Versace movie. She was yeah. great in that. That's what I'm saying. Like Judith has been doing good work lately, so I worry that this is going to be actually good as opposed to fun and trashy. Yeah. No, because I, I don't think she's making. I, okay, I'll be surprised because I no, she's well, been making some good you. choices. Like but no, but Lifetime basically got around this by saying this is a fictionalized account of the true story. Hmm. And then they showed a scene, okay? And this is when I was like, ooh, this is going to be good. So basically, okay. in the scene that they showed, um, Judith Light, the matron, accused Christina, Nellie Bly, of hitting on one of the guards. And so Judith Light tells Christina Ricci, you know what? You're a slut and a whore, and you know why you're a slut and a whore? Because it feels good down there. And so I'm going to make it so that it doesn't feel good down there anymore. And so then she straps Christina Ricci to, a bed, to like a bed, mm -hmm. and then they show her. She takes pliers. She reaches in this jar. Oh. She pulls out a leech, and guess where she's going to pull that leech? Tony Danza's vacuum. Oh. Yeah. yeah. She's putting the leech. Right there she's putting it. the leech there. <laughs> Christina Leach. Stick around. 
I'll tell you what, Christina Ricci's in one of my favorite movies, Buffalo 66. I thought you were going to say movie Casper. Badass. What movie? The <laughs> I thought you were going to say Casper. Casper? I've seen Casper too, and I work with Christina Ricci. But maybe I'll save that until the next, next oh, podcast. Oh, yeah, let's talk about that next week. But, but I thought uh, <laughs> if they're going to be putting leeches in orifices, and oh. then if they're adamant about saying this is a fictionalized version of the events, they're going to take some liberty. Yeah, I, I'm excited to watch this. And I and just as you have a Christina Ricci story, I may tell a story of, of well, it involves Judith Light's name, but it also involves me being really stoned. <laughs> okay, I okay. may have to tell that story so we'll next week because it is so- pretty funny. So, so people want to tune in next week. You get that, and you get the uh, the experience of working with Christina Ricci. You have no idea what I work with her on. It could be Adam's family. It could be anything. So you just, and uh, you'll be learning a little bit about history. Oh, and if you guys like want a, a, a refresher course about Nellie Bly, watch Drunk History because Drunk History did an episode about her. Good to know. Do you ever watch Drunk History? Yeah, I actually know – um, I, this is another random story. I, years ago, my, my friend Benny, who I've known from like doing comedy for years, he was in a really bad car accident. And so like, I went to visit him, uh, at his apartment and then come to find out years later, his best friend and roommate, uh, to this day, or I don't know if they're roommates anymore, but they were best friends. Uh, but his roommate at the time is the guy that created drunk history. So I was like in oh, his Derek apartment. Waters? Yeah. I was wow. in Derek's apartment. Derek Waters, who I think is kind of cute in a nerdy way. Yeah. Like, like I would go there with Derek Waters. Oh. That's a whole different story. Don't think he's gay, but, uh, hmm. you know. Derek Waters is dead? No, I said I don't think he's gay. Oh, no, I don't think he's gay either. No, I don't think he's gay either. They're but he's dead. one of those. He's one of those that I'm kind of like, you know, I could hit that. He could get it. He was dead. Hmm. <laughs> all right so life anyway, escaping I, I, the okay. madhouse i've already set the dvr to record it oh jeez it's on saturday Kurt, i don't have a dvr i'm gonna switch I, out Kurt, my, I, I, I'm telling you direct what? tv now i'm doing it i'm gonna get rid of comcast and get direct tv now but my but my comcast is also hooked onto my internet so i want to get so i want to get bios internet Fios and um, get this. Uh, DirecTV now. Yes. Because I, I, I got a DV, I got, uh, got a DVR feature, and it's basically in the cloud. You don't even need one of those contraptions anymore. I just set it from my phone right now. It's like $40 a month for DirecTV. Yeah. It's worth it. Well, guys, I got to go because I got to watch The Royal Housewives of New Jersey and then Project Runway All Stars. I've got to go watch a bunch of episodes at the Flintstones. Yes, watch that That's Anne Margrock episode on. You could watch it on YouTube. Done and done. Watch the Laugh Olympics, and I have to watch Killing Eve. So good. Oh, that's a good show. I've just finished it. So good. It's a good show. Anyway, <laughs> if you want to get a hold of us. You know, you can always get a hold of us on Facebook at A Lifetime of Hallmark, Instagram at A Lifetime of Hallmark Podcast. Uh, you can get a hold of me on Instagram at Kirkendall, spelled K U R K E N D A A L. Jason, where can they find you? I am on Facebook, Instagram, and uh, 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 Twitter at Big Shot Jason. Kurt at Kurt underscore Fitz, KurtFitzpatrick.com, and I'm on Facebook. I'm not on Instagram or MySpace or Google+. Plus. <laughs> All right. So watch the movie, everybody, and we'll talk to you next week. Bye. Bye. Bye.